right. Tasty. Spicy. Tasty vegan cuisine. Right. I mean, I don't want to say anything more than say, well, then, in your introduction, you said you had both written uh, three books on this subject matter. Where I'd like to start, however, is for you to share with us uh, how you moved from uh, being uh, people who were born into vegetarian values, mm -hmm. that you became vegetarians, and how you have since tried to spread this uh, in every place you go, and what are some of the values you believe are waiting for those people who are waiting to just make the change over when they're ready. Well, first I'd like to give thanks to the Most High, our ancestors, and for our higher selves. And Brother B, we really appreciate this opportunity to be here to share this information as we've experienced it. Uh, my wife and I, we wrote three books in response to what was happening to our friends, our relatives, and our, our associates. And that is not eating the right type of food for their body types. And you talked about meat. And it's my understanding, as we have it in the book, that 5,000 years ago, we did not eat meat. And the animals were part of our families, and of course we communicated with them. And it was brought out to me with you as an animal talk to someone who's eating your mama, your brother, and your cousin. But in terms of our body types, since our bodies are so different from the Europeans, we have to be um, cognizant about the fact that certain food is better for us. So if we just divide it in terms of stay away from the acid things, and lean more towards alkaline, and alkaline basically, your fruits, your vegetables, your grains, your legumes, your beans, and stay away from the acid stuff. And here we're talking about your alcohol, your caffeine, your meat, uh, your white bleachy things, the white sugar, as we talked about before, the white flour, uh, white table salt, all of those things that are white. White um, rice. <laughs> and, and of course the rice. And that's something you know I'd like to talk about a little later. But whenever you eat meat, several things happen. Number one, uh, if you're talking about protein, which is a myth that was beat across our head with, you got to have uh, your protein, so you got to eat meat. And the truth is you get more fruits, your fruits and vegetables give you more protein. And if you do eat meat, the protein you get is secondhand because the animal ate the food first, you're eating it second, but you get an opportunity to eat all of the toxins and contaminants that animals accumulated in its entire life in little bites that you have. So the, the rule or the motto is stay away from acid stuff because the acid stuff is the stuff that breaks your body down, shortens your life, and opens you up to illnesses. And at this point, I'll turn it on to my lovely wife, Mom Nasira. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, I'm also grateful for the opportunity to, uh, to be here on the station and to talk more about our lifestyles as um, what we call today vegans, uh, which means we don't eat any animal, anything. Um, we pretty much changed our diet based on our experiences in life is what causes us to, to make us do differently with what we eat. Um, my experience of leaving, living in a home where we did eat meat, but it was mostly the beef and the chicken uh, we had very little pork in our diet because I think my family know that pork wasn't that good and you should eat it seldom. Um, but we did have salads and we had our beans. Um, on weekends, you know, we had 
um, some pancakes and um, you know different things like that. Um, but I was also, as one of the children, I could not eat fish. And it was because when it was fried in cornmeal, I had an allergic reaction. So I didn't eat that at that time. But then going on to uh, college, leaving home, um, I didn't have the balanced meal. So after a year of eating in the fast foods and different restaurants and uh, eating lunch meat and just whatever, the body just suddenly just, um, just got really weak and I started having pains in my stomach. Um, but then I would go on and also working um, in the medical field, as my mom wanted me to go into that area, well, I got sick working there. Um, I was a lab tech phlebotomist and was drawing a patient's blood and um, the patient bumped me and the needle stuck me and um, I thought it was okay, but three days later I was itching everywhere. And sometimes when you have something going on, it takes a few days before it settles in. And I was itching so much, I decided to go to the doctor and um, they did the blood test. And after a week, I noticed my eyes turned yellow and um, I was just um, having uh, changes in my stool and my urine. And at that time, 40 years ago, the doctors weren't prescribing medication. So he told me, and because I was working there at the university, he said, you need to eat the way you were raised. In other words, you need to pack your lunch, prepare your foods. And so that's what I did. And I had cookbooks from my great aunts, so I started reading the cookbooks, and I started using some of those recipes. And then later on, another thing, um, having appliances is really helpful. Got to walk. And once I got that walk and I looked at those recipes, I was able to cut back on the meat by using smaller portions of them and adding more vegetables. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say, my brother, about uh, you know, the actual eating of food and so on? Yeah, yeah, actually what Dr. Joe said is right about the food. Because if you look, our ancestors, what they eat, we change that. And when we change that, that's when we have the problems in our life. Because they, they used to eat vegetables and a little bit of rice and leaves and all that kind of stuff. They don't eat uh, meat or a lot of meat or whatever. That's very true. And I want to say that giving thanks to them because I taste their food and I like it. I love it. Mm -hmm. and there's no meat in it. I don't, I don't like much of meat because they learn to cook it very much in the, in the house. Most of the time maybe fish or meat really and truly. It's not very good. So I give thanks to them coming to the Gambia, sensitizing the people and telling them how to eat properly and differently in their own property, not anybody's. So I'm very happy with them saying that here yeah, and coming to do that in the Gambia for the Gambians and everybody in the, in the world. So we're going to uh, wind up a little bit on healthy, holistic eating. Uh, so any other issues, uh, Ma Nazira, that you would like to share with us that you want to share? Uh, yes, I wanted to also um bring to the attention of some of our parents who um, have children attending school and they're being vaccinated. And we know that it doesn't feel like a good thing because sometimes our children, they become ill behind those. Well, uh, we had a lady working for us and she had the experience. So she said a child was not sleeping and he was irritated with the stomach. So I thought about some of the things that I do in the mornings. So I gave her some moringa powder. Um, of course, the turmeric that reduces the inflammation with a little lime, um, baba powder. Um, I know there's one called MSM, it's a little sulfur. Um, it's more or less from the pine tree. Um, and also, 
um, drinking plenty of water. And she said after her child had done that and drank a lot of water, she said his, um, he eliminated you know, all of that out of his stomach. And there was even worms from the sugars and the different starches. So um, my word is maybe with the parents, we need to use our local medicines like our moringa, neem, and balba, and the lime, and drink warm water with it, and we can start to flush out a lot of these things. Yeah, hydration, as we call it, drinking enough water is very, very important. Since our body's over 70% water, you know, we have to keep it in. If we don't drink enough water, we have problems. Your brain shrinks if you don't have enough water. You aren't able to get the toxins out of your organs and clean out your body without it. Your blood doesn't flow uh, as smoothly, which makes you more open to heart attacks and strokes. And here in the heat in the Gambia, woo, we've had some heat in the Gambia. Uh, it's very important that you remain hydrated and look out for your animals because they're very important too. Make sure they're hydrated. Plenty of water. Thank you very much, Mr. Joe. Yeah, that's a, a very true. We need uh, water. Water, we need it all the time. As I said, if you take the seeds and they give you drinking of water, and the water is very tasteful, because if you drink in something that is tasteful, then you want to drink it more. So, moringa seeds will do that, and the leaves is good for, for the body and everything else. So, really and truly, I wanted to tell my people to get to the moringa and healthy eating and get the seeds to, to eat the seeds, to chew the seeds, even before drinking the attire or whatever. Then you'll see the difference what we're talking about here and healthy life and healthy lifestyle and everything. And thank you very much for the, all the listeners and my colleagues here. Thank you. Right. So, uh, one, one last question. Uh, I'm in Nigeria and Dr. Joe. Uh, on Sunday, there's uh, the program uh, entitled Holistic Health and Eating, uh, which is taking place at uh, my own uh, garden restaurant. Uh, what can, say, people in terms of tasty things we're looking forward to? You don't have to tell them all, just whip the appetite. Uh, well, the first thing is, when we get sick, what do we have? Our mothers used to give us soup. Mm. So we'll have soup without the meat, of course, and so we'll have all the local greens in there. Um, and also I have some ladies that I've taught how to prepare my food over the last three or four months. So they're going to also assist. So we'll have stir fry, we'll have um, plantain um, prepared with ginger and pineapple um, and coconut oil. Um, we'll have the wonjong uh, juice, the balco juice. Um, we'll have, um, what else we're gonna have? Um, wild rice will be there. And I also have a wonderful um, sister, they're gonna prepare a big pot of Fendi. And she, and she also makes um, Fendi. This is a woman who's named Fatu Ba. She makes wonderful Fendi. So I bought at least seven or eight packages from her. So we'll get a chance to share that with everyone. Yes, and like I said, we want to encourage the local things here, the things that are accessible. In other words, you, you use what you have until you can do better. And the whole theme is, as you eat better, you're going to think better. And so we're just taking it one step at a time. And we are making a transition from things we know that don't serve our body any good, just one step at a time. And it's important that you are very patient with yourself because it's taken a lifetime for you to get to where you are right now. And it'll take a little time, but the good news is that you're gonna feel good about what you're doing as you're doing it. You're gonna feel the difference and see the difference. And we salute you and we salute your courage because you see it, and then you can be it. Thank you, all three of you, very, very much. And 
if I wasn't going to be there, I would change my plans and make sure I'm there. But I'll be there. I look forward to anyone coming to join us. As we say, there's no charge for the event. But because costs are being incurred, we hope that everyone who comes along will come along with something in their purse or their pocket to make a donation to help cover uh, the cost. Right. Uh, we have uh, 15 minutes of program to go. I want to, once again, big up our sister and our two brothers. And this is uh, our anthem that we see. The fact is, because what we had tonight, we had uh, three African teachers sharing with us. Uh, uh, so this is, of course, Yeah. 